This video is sponsored by Audible, your one-stop shop for all things spoken word entertainment. They boast the widest selection of audiobooks with everything from bestsellers to languages, business, motivation, podcasts. You can download your titles to listen anytime, anywhere. That makes it perfect for hikes long drives, flights. As a member, you will receive one credit every month to pick a title of your choice from the premium selection and keep it permanently in your library. Lately, my favorite, favorite, favorite has been this sleep track by Curtis Stone. He has the loveliest Australian accent and he is reading the complete guide to the art of modern cookery. It covers the quite complicated fundamentals of French cuisine and I just find it to be the perfect balance between captivating and boring. Like it's captivating enough to keep my mind away from any worries that might prevent me from falling asleep, but it's boring enough that it allows me to sleep. New members can always try Audible for 30 days on the house. If you'd like to start listening today, go ahead and visit audible.com slash moon or text moon to 500 500. That's M-O-O-N. Hi, 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 hi. I hope that you are doing very, very, very well tonight. I um, spent the past few days overhauling my filming room. It was such a disaster in here. It was keeping me from being able to film. Um, I'm sure you guys noticed for a very long time I've um, been using my living room. Um, and I was just completely overwhelmed by the mess in here because so many of it um, so much of it is made up of precious antiques. They're not actually, they're precious to me, like, um, <laughs> stuff that feels irreplaceable. And so the thought of coming in here and cleaning the house, um, was hard to bear. But then when I actually came and looked at all of it, I was like, oh no, the problem isn't that I have too much stuff. The problem is that I've done a terrible job organizing it. So, um, anyway, I've spent the past couple of days consolidating everything. You know, like I've got a bunch of, um, chests and they were, they were all empty. So I filled up all the chests with trinkets and things like that. So, uh, freed up a lot of space. So, um, and this is where I film any of my more elaborate role play videos where I need a lot of space for a backdrop, so I want to get back to making some 1920s and Baba Brook videos. So, for the 1920s, I want to do a librarian as well as a hair and or makeup salon, so let me know what you'd prefer if you'd like to do. 1920s haircut or makeup application. The only um, makeup brand I'm aware of that has time period appropriate looking products is Besame, lipstick, blush, and the powder, um, like cake, the cake mascara. I don't know if you are aware of any other brands that offer 1920s products. This is the palette that I've been using most days lately. I, um, got it for a role play, not thinking it'd be something that I really used much, but it's my new favorite. It's Ornate by Colourpop. Gilded, Siren, Bohemian, Charisma, Fever, Tipsy, Rival, Dream, and Sh I think you'll see why I love 
love it so much. It's all my favorite autumnal colors. So right now I'm wearing gilded to start the inner corners. But I've been using siren as a crease color, fever as the lid, boheme sort of like in the inner lid, and then tipsy rival in the outer corner, and sometimes dream if I'm feeling like smoking it out a bit, getting dramatic. So yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend this if you're into those sorts of colors at least. Gaunt, what does a gauntlet mean? It's a gauntlet, wristlet of the Marauder. So it's got kind of like a corseted lace up detail here and then the rest is Really nice snake skin textured of leather. also got here the pauldron that it reminds me of like an armadillo so I love that about it or a dragon maybe I feel like the, the chest of the dragon usually looks somewhat like that doesn't it Imagine a cross between an armadillo and a dragon. It's a game that Chris and I play when we're stuck waiting in line or in traffic. Um, we'll each pick a word to say, and then on three we'll say it, and then we'll think of like what the combination of the words would mean. Like, for example, the last one I can think that we did was he said dangerous, and I said doorbell. So we were like, okay, what would a dangerous doorbell be? And I can't even remember what we came up with. I don't know, probably like when you ring it, it would give you an electric shock or something. Okay, here's something I found that I don't remember buying, and I don't know what to use it for. It looks like something that Paris Hilton would buy for a chihuahua to wear. I must have gotten it for a 1920s video. Um, but I don't know that it looks vintage enough. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if you've got any ideas for this. So I find that so funny, like sometimes I just like get in a certain state while prop shopping. So this confidence is flowing through me and then the items come and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like trying to get back to whatever headspace I was in when I made the purchase. It's often not possible. Um, oh, so here was another exciting discovery I made tucked away uh, in a bottom drawer with many items on top of it. The Two Faced Enchanted Glamorland palette. This was my baby when I was like 12 or 13. Um, I think everybody who grows up using makeup has certain products that are, that are incredibly nostalgic. Like, I think a lot of us associate the Urban Decay Naked palette with high school. Well, this was my middle school product. So we've got this framed glittery fairy on the cover and these sparkly pink 
thing. Roses, butterflies, butterflies, butterflies. After centuries of hiding from mankind, the pixie pinups have popped up to share their supernatural secrets for ethereal beauty and sex appeal. Discover a treasure trove of lip gloss and eyeshadows hidden beneath their shimmering, enchanted glamour. Unveil their favorite winter bronzer and blooming blush, shining through the canopy of frozen pink boughs. Delight in a dose of divine shadow insurance, the perfect potion for eternally spellbinding eyes. I thought this pop-up was the coolest thing ever. Still do. We've got the emerald fairy, the pink fairy, and the purple fairy. Redhead, blonde, and brunette. Pixie Beauty Secrets. There's these little cards that give you ideas for which products to combine to create different looks. Here's the bronzer and the blush. It's a very good blush shade. I wish that this wasn't... How old am I? So if I got this when I was 12, 11. I wish this product was not 11 years old. Because I would gladly still use it. My favorite colors were Georgian Wheezy, Honey Pot, Exclusive, Boy Toy, Peach Fuzz, Exclusive. All of them. All, all the colorful ones I love. I was very into colorful eyeshadow in middle school. Um, and I like to match it to my outfit. So like if I was wearing a blue shirt, I'd put on blue eyeshadow. And my older sister would be like, aren't you embarrassed? I was like, no, I look amazing. Glitter sample pack. Consider getting rid of this. I don't know. I think I can always find a use for glitter. Babble brook potions and things. Crafting. I don't know. It also just kind of makes a good sound when you put it in the back of the nails of acid. Nice. bag and I filled it with some things just because I like how the taps on it sound better when it's got stuff in it. Do you like it? Do you like it? A lot of nights I like to fall asleep to the same audio of rain falling on a tent. Of all the types of rain falling, that's my favorite. On a tent or an umbrella. Or sometimes we'll have ones where the rain is falling onto leaves. Those are nice as well. But I don't like, like rain on a tin roof. Or rain falling in water. No. <laughs> or on a car. It's been intense. Color and how to use it. I signed up for an oil painting class the other day. But I'm third on the waiting list. So I don't know if I'll get in or not. This palette right here. Sorry about that. Sorry. My apologies. Um, this 
some tricky stuff to get the hang of. Light source, shadow, bright light, soft light. For some people it's more intuitive than others. Though. My mom did some art school in college, so even when I was really little, I remember she would she would inform me when my light source was off. Like in first grade, I'd show her a drawing I did of the sun and a tree and the grass and a bird, and she'd be like, "Well, if the sun's here, then why is it this side brighter than that side?" And I'd be like, "Oh, yeah, why is it?" She wasn't like critiquing me in a mean way. It was more just sort of like fun. I don't know. Thing to learn. From her. I thought it was interesting. Find out what color it is, how it works, and how to make it work for you and your paintings. I've been trying to go for a hike every day for the last couple of weeks. Um, I've been getting about 13,000 steps a day, which is far more than usual um and today i did a hike that was on some rocky red cliffs overlooking the ocean and the cliffs were so orange and the ocean was so blue and it made me think of how in action movies blue and orange or blue and gold is the very classic color scheme in a lot of movies but i think i most associate it Fury Road, stuff like that, um, and just to see it occurring naturally in nature is neat, just seeing how, how well it works, and nature doesn't know that it's doing it, it just is, and then we kind of just like mimic those things, but notice what looks good and what doesn't. Okay, so here's my kitty cat mouse pad that I don't dare use because I I think that would be very rude to just like plop a mouse on her face. <gasps> Cat and mouse. Maybe she'd like it. I don't want her to eat my mouse. So I'm going to continue to not use it. I went to Target recently and picked up plenty of hair products. Headbands. Clips. Those sorts of things. Because... Now there's pieces of my hair that are short enough that they won't stay back in a ponytail. So I need little devices to keep it in check. I haven't tried this one yet. I'm not quite sure what placement. Look right. I'm embarrassed to try. I just don't know. Okay, let's just go for it. Trial and error. I think that maybe looks a bit, a bit more natural. I cover it up. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six stars. Six stars. Six stars. I also picked up at Target some fresh Real Techniques Miracle Complexion sponges. Um, I want to do a makeup tutorial for you guys soon of the look I've been doing with this palette. And my makeup sponge was looking a little ratty, so I picked up some fresh ones. I used to apply my foundation with my hands. And were very aghast by that in a tutorial I did. And I like, didn't think about it while I was filming. I forgot that that was a no-go. But it's one of those things that is like, 
you don't realize how inconvenient and awful it is if you're used to it. And then switching to sponges, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that for so long. What was I thinking? I'm really sorry if I seem um, weird. I think I'm both not used to doing soft spoken and also I've been awake for a very long time. So I'm pretty tired, but not in a way where I feel uncomfortable at all. Just a bit loopy. Just a bit loopy. Um, I've been trying this Old Spice Wolfthorn deodorant, and I really like it, but especially for a men's deodorant, I can't believe how exactly it smells like, um, an, an energy drink, maybe, or candy. Very, very sweet and fruity. <laughs> but I like that. As I've been going on my hikes, um... Maybe like three times a hike as I'm passing somebody who's going the opposite way on the trail I'll get a whiff of their perfume or cologne and I'll love it and I'll want to ask what it is so bad because I'm trying to build up my fragrance collection but it feels like a strangely intimate question to ask a stranger like of all the questions that you could ask somebody it feels like one of the most flirtatious for some reason I don't know, maybe most people wouldn't take it that way. You don't have to be like, oh my god, you smell so good. You could just be like, excuse me, sorry if this is weird, but I was just wondering what perfume you're wearing. It smells really good. No. No. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I just wish that it would hover above their heads. It should just, it should just say, people should just be labeled with what fragrance they're wearing. Um, photosynthet, photosynthet, this is a word game that I've yet to play, let me know if you've played it, um, but it's about trees, as you can see, I love the art style, it reminds me of Princess Mononoke, a bit. Just a little bit. Here's what it looks like. A green strategy board game. Plant and shape the ever-changing forest as you cultivate your seeds and your strategy. Take your trees through their life cycle from seedling to full bloom to rebirth and earn points as their leaves collect energy from the revolving sun's rays. concept for a board game, I think. Chris has been on a board game kick lately. Um, he also got a Goosebumps game and Blockus. We played a few rounds of Blockus and that was so much more fun than I was expecting. Yes, I think that just might do it for this random triggers video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here with me through my sleepy um, days. I hope to see you again very soon. Very soon. Very soon. And I hope that you sleep.